I'd like to call the Tangeville Parish School Board meeting for January 19th, 2021. Roll call, Miss Cindy. Miss Richards. Present. Mr. Toller. Here. Miss Abrams. Here. Mr. Westmoreland. Present. Mr. Duncan. Here. Mr. Bush. Here. Mr. Moore. Miss Simmons. Here. Ms. Dominguez. Present. If everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We're going to move down to D. Consider approval for the board minutes of January 5th, 2020. Do I have a motion? I make the motion. Ms. Sandra makes a motion. Second? Second. Mr. Tom? Second it? Yes. Voting is open. Mr. Moore votes yes. Yes, mine, mine didn't come up. Mr. Westmoreland votes yes. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving down to our committee reports. Capital Outlay Committee of a Whole from January 14th, 2020. Moved to adopt. Mr. Toller. Second. Second by Ms. Janus. Any comments, discussion? Voting, Miss Cindy. Voting is open. Mine lost connection, so yes. Okay. 
Yes, me too. Okay. Voting is closed. <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. 2B, Finance Committee from January 14th, 2020. Do I have a motion? Motion to adopt. Second. Mr. Glenn, Mr. Duncan, second. Any discussion? Yes, I have a couple questions, Mr. President. One, you know, these, these meetings were called not on any fault of anybody, uh, on a two-day notice. So I could not make, I couldn't make it that day. So I'm looking at the uh, only one item in the finance committee that was, uh, I guess it's considered C, consider approval of a revolution, uh, resolution giving preliminary approval to the, the administration to bond up to $23 million. What, what, what is that going to be used for? I mean, what, what, is that, what is that for? I mean, is that the phase one projects? Is that, that's what that's for? Yes. How, how much was the phase one projects total? Uh, 27 million, I believe, Mr. Schoenelbach, is that correct? Yes. So, so the, uh, the other $4 million, and of course my concern is the punch total restricted fund. And once again, if, if it's 27 million, that's the first number I heard from day one. The first number I heard we were gonna bond 23 million from day one. We were going to spend every penny that the Punchatula Restricted Fund had, 3.8 million or whatever it is. I, I see no wiggle room in here for anything. Is it possible that we could just up that number to 25 million if we don't need to bond 25 million? Fine. I know Champ Cooper has some restricted funds that Mr. Mingus and I chatted about, about maybe not using all of them. But our restricted fund is 3.8 million. Yes, it's being spent on Punchatula schools. <clears throat> I understand that but I just still think it's unfair to start planning as we've planned from the beginning to spend every penny of that money and I still I still do not see anywhere where anybody's trying to you know maybe figure out how we can save not spend all of that restricted fund money and if people don't understand that this money is before the DSEG case even happened it was frozen it was only to be used for Punchatula schools. And Champ Cooper's not even considered a Punchatula school. And it's been in this account for eight years. This money is being proposed to be used for Punchatula schools. We need the room. There's no question about that. But it's still a restricted fund that we can only use. How come it's not possible not to spend it all? But and I, and, I, and I know Mr. Mingus and I talked to Ms. Westmore and I talked, Mr. Duncan and I talked before the meeting. But I'm still hearing the same numbers that we've heard from the beginning. Phase one's 27 million. We're gonna take four million out of restricted fund, almost everything for punch tool, and we're gonna bond up to 23 million. And I'm speaking up because I still don't see any plan out there saying that we can bond. So why, why would it hurt to, to raise the 23 million number up to 25 million? And if we don't use it, then we don't use it, but at least it gives us, what if phase one comes in more than what we expect? What if it comes in less? Can we come back in the future and change this number? Can we change it tonight? Once we agree tonight, is it possible? Can we come back in two months and change it to 25 million? Or it's gotta be, Mr. Stalin by shaking his head, no. It's gotta be, it's, when we do it tonight, we, we're, we're done. So if we do this tonight, I'm, I'm thinking our punch shield, our, our restricted funds is all gone. So I, I'm, and if I sound like I, so I'd like to amend this to change that number from 23 million to 25 million to give the administration authority to bond up to 25 million. Now if they, do, if they only bond 20 million, that's okay. So what does that, what does it hurt? We don't have to go get 25 million, do we? We don't have to get 23 million, it's just a number, but I think it will help save and it will give an opportunity for Punchatula to be able to save some of this restricted fund. Not all of it, of course, but it seemed like to me we have no wiggle room right here. So, okay. So you want to make a, a motion? Yes, I'm going to. I like to amend this motion if it's possible, if it's correct to do, and change that 23 million dollar number to 25 million to give the administration the authority to bond up to 25 million whenever that time gets here, 
they might not want to do it we might not need to do it but it gives them a lot of authority to do it and it might only be 22 million but i know if it stays at 23 all our restricted fund money in the punch tool account, account will be spent okay so i'd like to make that miss president in the form of a amendment okay. i guess right madam okay. president would 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 it be appropriate to allow our cfo to come and give a better explanation or miss stilly to give a better explanation please before Mr. Brett, would you like to give us an explanation on this? Should we get a second before we? Mm -mm. Wouldn't it be proper to get a second on the motion before we debate it? Mm -hmm. Well, our, if you will withdraw your motion temporarily so that Mr. Schnaudelbach can say what he wants to say, you might be able to get a second. No, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to leave it because, I, I, again, I, I, it, he's, we've been explained it. It's all, did Mr. Schnaudelbach ask you one question? Do you, do you have any intention not to spend all the punch to the restricted fund money? No, the intention is to spend all the restricted funds. Yeah. Uh, so, prior to yeah. So I'll I believe my uh, amendment on the floor. Okay. Do I get a second? Has the has, have you made the motion? Yes, he did. I will second. And, and listen, this is just. Can we just keep discussing it now, Ms. President, or that's it? If there's a, a motion on the floor and there's a second, so we need to vote on it. No, no, no we need to have discussion. I mean, I mean, it still might be 23 million. I'm, I'm not changing any of the plans here. It's just giving us an opportunity in case they need to be changed or in case there's five of us that says, okay, let's save some of that restricted punch tool of money that, that we don't have now. So that, that's it. You go ahead, Mr. Brett, explain to us. Um, I'll answer questions. The project's Current costs are expected to be a little under um, 23 million, closer to 22.5. So, um, but you know, until you open the bids, you don't know what the true cost is. We don't expect to need 25 million dollars, but um, you know, you could increase the rate if you want. But the board um, wouldn't make its decision until February, when, until later after the bond commission, when we decide exactly what we need and when we start to approve it. Go ahead. And Mr. Schnaudelbach, just in uh, the agenda or, or the item that we considered right before this one, it's my understanding that we just approved $75,000 worth of expenditures out of the parish-wide yeah. funds yeah. for Ponchatoula Junior High. Is that right? That is correct. And, and then prior to that, we had approved um, some band instruments out of the parish-wide fund for Ponchatoula Junior High. Those were purchased out of the restricted funds, but they all, both of those items passed with the unanimous support of this board. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and do you, have you done estimations on what $23 million, what the note, the annual note would be on a $23 million uh, we have, bond? We have So you're comfortable at what we would be having, what we would have to pay if we borrowed 23, but you're not necessarily comfortable with what we would have to pay if we borrowed 25? Correct. 
and do you have an idea of what the interest rate would be on this yet? Has any have we heard about what that would be? Well, just for the record, no one's talking about barring 25. That's just the number that we're going up to, and we don't know. But, Mr. Stalmack, you made a well, comment. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I still am, I, I, I would like to yes, Mr. Floor for a minute. You can, Mr. Duncan. Okay, and I'm a, I don't know if I, I'm a, I hate to. So over the life of, do you have any idea? Let's say that we borrowed an extra 500000 so that we could keep $500,000 in cash that we already have. Do you know how much money that would cost us over the course of 20 years to borrow an extra $500,000? Just so we can keep cash in the bank? No. Okay. Okay. All right. And I'm going to just ask you again tonight, the only thing we're, this resolution does, and you answered this for us at committee, is authorize the administration and to take the steps necessary, you know, go negotiate an interest, go to the bond commission, all of those things, so that y'all can then bring the final bond package back for us for approval. Is that right? And we would have to have another public hearing and vote on the actual bond package. Okay. Mr. Toller? Yeah, I just wanted to say real quick, I, I do understand what Mr. Bush is referring to because as we've been trying to get to the point to where there are no more restricted funds, obviously because of the court case, the reason why Ponchatoula still has such a large account is because they've been so restricted by overwatch that they haven't been able to grow if it were not for the i would say the court intervening we would have already spent that money building things that we needed to build in ponchatoula the previous boards before us but then you have districts like myself who when we built sumner and independence you know we did our own service bonds we we did our own money our own financing to build our own schools so moving forward without all of these accounts is where we need to get to as a district so i understand the, the feelings of, of losing your savings account but keep in mind that we've all been living out of the general fund for years and fixing things out of the general fund and had it not before the court intervening that account would have already been spent on construction in the punch tool area anyway but i do understand your concern well so i'm confused mr stonebach just made a statement that the federal uh, court want, wants us to spend this money. Well, this yes. money's been there for eight years. So I, I don't know what it, it had been spent. But here's my main concern. <clears throat> Mr. Duncan, it's not just keep cash in the bank. And I really resent you saying that. But here's the problem. We got six schools in Punchatula. And every one of these administrators are our students and these six schools need something at these schools today. They need something. And these funds should be shared amongst these six schools even though I, I know a second grader will eventually go to uh, uh, dc Rees and have a building or or they might transfer to the high school but we've got six six different schools and this restricted money's been there forever and so the idea that the federal courts want us to spend it and here all of a sudden here we're spending it and i want to spend it you know, Miss Bass and I talked the other day, and I was at a meeting, and I said, let's spend it. I've been wanting to spend it, but let's spend it on down. But give the other four schools an opportunity maybe to get something else that we won't have to take out of the general fund so Sumner or Independence or LaRonja could have something from the general fund because we have a restricted fund that no one else can touch except Punchatula. So I guess that's kind of like, you know, so... If there's a project going on another school and we have you know this money why not keep some of it and we can do projects there and then we can turn around and use general fund money for other schools so again that's an argument for future i'm just trying to say 
give us some leeway here on the bond money so in case we keep kicking this around enough of us say okay let's save a few hundred thousand in the punch shield restricted fund and let a few other hundred thousand go to another school district that that could use it that's it and if hey if no one votes for it i pull for the punch school of people in our schools and that's all i can say i have an alternative motion then madam president that I, I would like for us to go up to 26 million dollars because i want to keep the million dollars that Hammond has in restricted funds. Well, that was going to be my next question, Mr. Yeah. Um, Schnatterbach. How many of our districts are going to be using their restricted money? I know there's not a lot of restricted money left in a lot of the pots, but are we using everyone's restricted money? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's restricted money is being used mm -hmm. in this project as well as Ponchatoulas. Right, because that's instead of getting something done for independence in Sumner area, it's just going to be our millage yeah, no. paid off. $35,000 a year to hold $500,000 back. Okay. And, it, and you had mentioned the independence in Sumner. We're using their restricted funds to pay off those debts, correct? Okay, Ms. Rose. Well, as Mr. As Mr. Bush stated, uh, we did talk about it, and I've been saying for a long time I hated to use our restricted funds. I've told you that for months and months and months, but I understand that if we don't use that money to build these facilities, that we have to borrow more money, which is counterproductive if we borrow money that we really don't know if we have enough sales tax money to pay off. So I'm, I'm, I understand what you're saying. But after speaking with you, I'm more comfortable with that. I do understand that at Champ Cooper, we, we have really a minuscule amount of money compared to the amount of money that we are going to receive from these bonds to build the 15 classrooms at Champ Cooper. And the same principle at, at Ponchatoula Junior High School and at DC Reads. So we're giving up money, but we're getting way more money than we're giving up, is how I look at it. And I. Every student at Champ Cooper will go to Ponchatoula High School unless they choose to go somewhere else. Every student that goes to Ponchatoula schools will eventually get to Ponchatoula High School and benefit from those classrooms that we desperately, desperately need right now. So I understand what you're saying, but after talking to you and talking to Glenn, talking to Sandra, talking to Mr. Snottlebuck, I feel comfortable that we don't need to borrow more money than we need to borrow. We have the funds in our account and if we can, I mean, I, I do think you said you were going to leave a certain amount of money in there, but just a minuscule amount compared to what we have. But it's still going to help us to pay the immediate needs we have. But um, having served here for 14 years, I understand the judge has told us that we should not have separate funds. Every district should be allocated money based on the need of what they have at their campus and that's where that's the goal we've been trying to get to all these years so i'm just i understand what you're saying mr bush but everybody wants something but we all want to keep our money i don't want to keep we, the we, money i want to spend it but we got six schools not just two there and all the parents falling apart there's a lot of schools that could use a lot of things like and, and, and it's, been, it's been going on for a long time yeah. Mr. Stoddard, yeah. I, 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 I'm not even convinced we're going to have a phase one because we know the judge has got to approve that and we're just sitting here. So here's a last right. question before we vote. All right. If it's frozen, so the money gets frozen now basically in, in, in the restricted fund and we're waiting on approval for phase one. So you'll be reluctant to spend it because it's needed for these building projects and it, it'll just sit there. Again, the needs, there are needs, we have money in our parish wide capital project fund to handle the needs that come up in the Okay, can we call for a vote on the amendment to the motion? Online voting is open. Online voting is closed. Motion fails. All right, so we need, we need to bring the, the, the original motion back. And we need to vote on it. 
And we need to go ahead and vote on that. Ms. Cindy, our, did we, we did get a motion on that already. Yes, we did. Okay. Made by Mr. Westmoreland, seconded by Mr. Duncan. I have to accept the financial I mean, yeah. the report. To accept the report. The report. Mm -hmm. Online voting is open. Online voting is closed. Motion passes with Mr. D Mr. Bush voting no. All right, we're going to move on to C, Personnel Committee, January 14th, 2021 meeting. Do I hear a motion to accept the Personnel Committee? So moved. Second. Ms. Janice, Janice made a motion. Ms. Sandra, a second. Any questions? Any discussions on this? Call for a vote. Call for a vote, Ms. Cindy. Voting is open. <clears throat> Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to recognitions. A happy day for Tanchpaho Parish. Consider the proclamation recognizing the accomplishments accomplishments of Devontae Smith and declaring July 5th January. as Devontae Smith January January 5th my <laughs> mouse was in the way January 5th as Devontae Smith Day Miss Janice if you would like to do the pleasure I would, I'm honored to do the pro I'd like for um, the superintendent Miss Dilly our president and Miss Sandra to come down front Good evening. At this time, we will hear from our superintendent. Thank you. Um, we would like to ask Devante's father, Mr. Dickerson, to come down uh, to the front. Uh, also, Mr. Dickerson, do you have any other family members that are with you you'd like to come down to present the proclamation to receive it? I'm sorry. Yes. All righty. Come on down. Thank you for being here tonight. Also, we realize that we have a lot of the Amid High School family uh, that is here tonight, and I would ask you guys to, to stand um, and be recognized. We also have the principal, <laughs> Dr. Ford, if you'd like to come up. Um, we have many of our faculty members from Amid High School here, the coaches as well. Um, if you'd like to join us up here for the proclamation, um, and Ms. Richards will uh, read that for us, um, and we will present it to Devante's father. proud to read the pro proclamation on behalf of the Amy Warriors and District A. Proclamation. Whereas Devante Smith was a 2017 graduate of Amy High School 
who exhibited a stunning athletic and academic abilities, which have earned him recognition and awards. And whereas, while attending Amede High School, he received the District 7 3A MVP award in his junior and senior year. 3A All-State Junior and Senior Year, 2016 3A State Football Championship MVP award, and was chosen to play in the 2017 U.S. Army All-American Board Bowl, and whereas upon graduation from Amede High School, Devontae traded in the purple and gold for crimson and white at the University of Alabama. Whereas he earned the 2018 SEC First Year Academic Honor Roll, two-time first All-SEC team, college football All-American team, Associated Press College Football Player of the Year, Paul Hornin Award, a versatile of all NCAA players, Walter Camp Award, Maxwell Award, Balifnikov Award for Outstanding Receiver, SEC Offensive Player of the Year, 2021 Rose Bowl Offensive MVP, 2021 National Football Championship Offensive MVG, and other numerous awards. And whereas the Heisman Trophy is awarded annually to most outstanding player in college football since 1935, who demonstrates diligence, perseverance, and hard work. And whereas on January the 5th, 20. 21, Devontae Smith was recognized and presented the 82nd Heisman Trophy. And whereas his many coaches, teachers, and residents of Tanchwall Parish proudly joined the Tanchwall Parish School Board in congratulating Devontae on his profound accomplishments and inspiring example of commitment to excellence during his high school and collegiate career. And now, therefore, we the Tanchpole Parish School Board and Melissa Steely, Superintendent, proudly honor and celebrate Devontae and do hereby proclaim January the 5th annually as Devontae Smith Day. Be it therefore, the Tanchpole Parish School System urges all citizens to join in recognizing Devante for his remarkable accomplishments and wish him well as he begins the next chapter of his story. Proclaim this 19th day of January 2021, Robin Abrams, Board President, Board Members, Brett K. Duncan, Sandra Simmons, Randy Bush, Jerry Moore, Tom Tola, Rose Dominguez, Janice Richards, Glenn Westmoreland, and Superintendent Melissa M. Stilly. We salute you. And each time that I opened up that newspaper and we cut out these articles, 
there was, I, I'm very many, and I hope to one day, but there was such pride because these are ours. These are our homegrown <coughs> local students, and it, it was a great pride that I took in putting these articles out. And I wrote a special note to the parents. My heart swells with pride for our former amazing Amy warrior, Devante, and for his family and coaches. Each time Devante made catches and runs, my mind went back to his family and the coaches and the teachers at AB. There are no adequate words to express my joy and pride. I felt as I put out each article in honor of your son. God has truly blessed Devante with great talent, but has with even a greater heart as was expressed by him and with God's blessings and I, I, I want to present these articles to you that I put out for you to put in the scrapbook and this note. Okay, moving right along to our academic update. Okay. Call Ms. Carmen Brabham up front. Mm -hmm. Ready, start, informational campaign and updates. Okay, just once. Okay. You can go after Devante, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's third grade teacher. <laughs> I taught Devante in the third grade, and I see a little boy up there. I don't see... I still picture him that way. So I'm so proud of him and so happy to have just a little bitty part in his education. I was so proud the day uh, Ms. Topps texted me a picture of him in his graduation outfit. She said, Brabham, look at your student. And I was as proud of him that day as I was the night I watched him accept the Heisman. So, a little pride. Um, but moving right along, I'm here to give you an update on Ready, Start, Tanch Baho. Uh, specifically on our information and coordinated enrollment campaigns and our coordinated funding request. So last time I was here, uh, showcased our website that we're so proud of. Well, since then, we have launched a social media campaign as well. So we have a Facebook um, page that we're managing and, and updating and giving out information to the public. So um, it says our old logo is still on one side because I made these myself before we were a Ready Start uh, community. We were hoping to be one, but we couldn't advertise Ready Start until we actually became one. And now Facebook wants me to jump through some hoops to change our name. So we're jumping, and uh, we should be able to change it to Ready Start soon. We can use our logo, but they want, they want the official paperwork. So we're, we're working on that. Um, and they'll do that through our press release. So you'll see a press release re later this month for Ready Start Tanch Baho. We also have a Twitter account that we're, we're working on as well. Uh, same platforms, you know, they are all the same to me. Facebook, Twitter, what's the other one? Uh, Instagram, and all the kids' things that I know nothing about. 
But uh, our parents use those. So they use those more than the flyers we send out. They use those more than the old um, uh, signs that we used to post. We, we're still probably going to use a few signs, but this is the way our parents communicate. So we're trying to speak that language. So we have, um, and the last one we have is our Instagram page. And, and there's great visuals. That's my phone number they can call me for. Um, so our, our, um, our coordinated enrollment is starting March 1st. That's when parents can call and start applying for next year. And they have been calling. And you can tell when they talk to one another because I'll get five phone calls in a row from the same area. I was excited, OWW, five parents called me in a row the other day. Said somebody is calling other people. So that's good. We want word of mouth. But that's why I'm sharing this with you tonight. Uh, Ms. Jenkins placed these links on your board agenda so you can share them. I'm going to uh, share them on Pangy Parents, so the parents will have these links. But we need followers, we need our word to, to spread. And the way to do that is word of mouth and sharing those things with you. So I wanted you to be aware of what's coming. And then if you'll go to our website, um, this is our how we're going to do enrollment. We're going to do the same way as we did last year, which is over the phone applications. That worked very well. It, it's a personal touch to talk to the parents and do the application with them over the phone. But what we're working on that will be new will be when the parents visit our website, how to apply, we're working on blocking appointments through this website. So parents can go, we'll have blocks of time. They can put in their information to schedule an appointment. So right now they call me, I schedule an appointment, someone calls them back. We'll, we'll skip the step of them calling me or, or my team and they'll book their, their appointment directly. So we're excited about that and, and we're working to get that going by March 1st. Um, we're still in the process of establishing our board of directors. I had that ambitious goal of having our first meeting uh, before the Christmas holidays, but it takes a lot of time to talk to people and explain who we are and what we're going to do. And even though I like to talk, it's a little more time than I thought it would take. So our new goal is to have our first meeting by the end of May before the school, system, uh, before the school um, year ends. And I have some great leads and some great people are on board and just getting people talking about early childhood is what our goal is for right now. Um, and the last thing, our coordinated funding request, that's where uh, we look at our need for Tanchapo Parish for our early childhood um, students. And remember, I'm talking about birth to four years old. That's who, that's, that's my little uh, area there. So we have to ask for seats through the state. So we're asking for 600 LA4 seats, which is the same request we had last year. We haven't quite reached that in our monthly uh, goals, but it's due, you know, COVID has, has made parents a little bit concerned about sending their, their little babies to school. But we've, we've been pretty consistent. So the state said, you know, don't reduce your, your request because of the, you haven't hit your number. So we're going to request 600 seats again for LA4. Um, but we're also going to request 125 three-year-old <coughs> seats. And this is, these are to be housed in childcare centers. Last year we asked for 60, but we weren't awarded any. And the state gave priority to Ready Start Networks. We weren't a Ready Start Network last year. We were a Get Ready Committee. So um, we're now Ready Start. So they told us to be bold because what they do is, even if we don't uh, receive any seats, what this does is let the state know what our needs are so they can allocate funding to our early childhood program. So we may not uh, have a seat allocated to us, but we're going to ask for 125. And we, we had an application process with our child, um, early child care centers. And uh, they, they uh, submitted the applications and they may give us 100, they may give us 10. So what we will do is we gave them criteria that we will base their applications on, on which centers get awarded the seats. So they were clear on that. So we were excited to have 14 centers apply for seats. And we are uh, putting them in classes of eight because eight is the highest quality of ratio, student teacher ratio. And we felt like one of our goals for Ready Start is high quality and tier one curriculum. So we didn't, uh, according to the rules, they could put more children in a class, but we felt like since our goal is quality, we needed to uh, reserve the highest quality for state funded seats. So we're, we're allocating uh, seats for eight in each center for new classes. So we'll work with centers um, on, on how they, how they do that. 
Um, this request, uh, we have to have public input for these requests. So um, after this meeting, I'll put our funding request on our website, the, the early childhood site that you're seeing now, as well as my early childhood site under Tangeboro Parish School System as well for public input. And they can also call or email me. My number is everywhere on the website. Um, and so uh, the last thing I wanted to just do a little quick update on our numbers. You know, we're holding kind of steady December. We had um, a little less in attendance, but you know, our COVID numbers had a spike, so that's um, to be expected. But we get calls every day with parents wanting to apply. So we're still taking applications for students for this school year. So um, in March, we'll still fill seats that we have available for this school year, as well as fill um, seats for next year. So that's my, my update for you for Ready Start. Does anybody have any questions? Question. So you, you have seats available for the, this year? Yes, we have certain huh? sites. Not all of them have seats, but many of them do because drops and transfers. And how many sites altogether? Uh, 15 public school sites. From north to south end? Ma'am? All from the north end, south yes, end? Yes, ma'am. Yes, 15. Ma and we have three off-site classes that are help, uh, housed in child care centers as well. So we have three pre-K classes housed in child care. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Carmel. Thank you. Thank you, Carmel. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to five, the superintendent's report and recommendations. Ms. Stilley? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, under the superintendent's report 5A, um, we would ask the board tonight to consider approval to extend the current COVID-19 policy, which is policy GBRIBC. It's, in, it's titled Emergency Paid Sick Leave for the COVID Pandemic an emergency family medical leave um, through March the 31st, 2021. Uh, and this is waiving the, the, the board policy to or, in order to do this. So if you look, um, well, Ms. Uh, Jenkins has it pulled up on your screen. I was gonna say look under five, tab number five, but if on this particular policy, this is the policy that originated from the federal law, which ended December 31st. So what we would like the board to approve tonight is adding that one line that just says, um, all, although that the federal, basically, Congress expired on December 31st, the school system would like to extend the provisions uh, for this emergency paid sick leave until March the, the 31st of 2021 for employees who have not used their allotted um, benefits of 10 days. So that's the agenda item that we would like to ask the board to consider tonight. I'd like to make that motion. Second. But Ms. Sandra made a motion. Mr. Toller, second. Any discussion on this? Yeah, I have some questions about uh, Ms. Stilley. Okay, kind of break it down to me, elementary, so I can understand it. We gave the government gave our employees 10-day COVID leave. Well, the, the federal law said that we had to we had provide COVID. We actually, well, we, those taxpayers, taxpayers pay the cost associated with the 10 COVID days. And, the, and, and it only takes effect when we send them home. When we tell them they're quarantined, they can't come to work. If one, they test positive or if they're quarantined and they could be quarantined for outside reasons like they were exposed at a party or church or whatever and with someone positive and their the doctor their doctor or their physician has said that they're quarantined yeah, they come they come back and then then we quarantine them because they've been around my, my son's been quarantined three times so i understand the process they use all their sick leave then then they come back and then we quarantine them again because they were exposed. They're out of COVID days, they're out of sick days. What happens? They get no pay. None of our employees get paid if that, if that ever happens. So, right. So, so here's this policy is just saying that we're extending it 
till March 31st. So I guess if, I'm talking about the ones because now I'm getting phone calls so, about. So employees. you're you're talking about another item besides the agenda item. You know, I'm just asking a question about how it's working because these employees are calling me saying, "Look, I got I got sent home. The school system sent me home. I used my days. The school system sent me home again. I used my sick days. The school system sent me home again. I want to work, but I can't help it. I wasn't sick. I didn't get COVID. I didn't test positive. I'm out of COVID days. I'm out of sick days." And now I'm sitting home and I'm not getting paid. And I want to go to work, but I can't. But I'm, I don't get paid anymore. So I don't know how many employees that's happened to. But Mr. we are. I, I know a few of us are getting those calls now. So I, I'm not sure how that works or what's what's happening there. Mr. Bush, I'm going to let um, Mr. Jinko explain it all to us. Uh, Mr. Bush, that is, we are having people quarantined two and three times, unfortunately. I'm positive. Uh, most of the cases, I'm a close contact now, then I become positive later. What we are going to do, we are going to make sure that no employee is not punished by taking sick days away from them or being negative as far as sick days. This is our thoughts, and th these are the things that we've started implementing. If I'm quarantined that second time and, and, and I have no COVID days left, if I, let's say I'm a teacher and I can do my job from home, zoom in, etc. We have a form that we're going to have our principal sign saying that teacher X was able to do his or her duties from home to a satisfactory uh, per the principal. Those days we're going to note the days in ASAP that they're out because we need to know that that teacher was not there in case something happens in the classroom. They will be given those days back. Next question is, well, what if I can't work from home? That's understandable. If for some reason an individual can't work from home, let's say if I'm a bus driver or a school food service worker, and they would have the option of, look, I want to take my sick days. I'm out of sick days. I want to take my extended medical leave. If those are not our options, school food service workers and bus drivers or any other support employee, custodian, et cetera, obviously there are some opportunities for them to come up and make up those days over the summer. If I'm a custodian, and instead of having a school that needs some additional help, that custodian, if I was out 10 days, they can work those eight or 10 days that they took COVID leave to make up for that time out. Bus drivers, same type of thing. They can come up here and help us do reports and different things like that. So we are trying to set up as many possible scenarios to where we are not deducting a COVID leave from our employees or causing them to go into being negative in their sick days. Mr. Jenko, the numbers of these particular cases are not that high. Is that correct? Correct. That we're talking correct. about small. I know for December time there were ten individuals that dipped into their sick leave, but we're after tomorrow's payroll. We'll know if any of those were due to COVID leave, and if it was due to them being quarantined twice, we'll get in touch with the individual, have them fill out the paperwork, and they will get those days back. But if it was because they went and took their own sick days or personal days, then that's a completely different story. And so employees can reach out to you directly if they're being docked or they have questions about their and, days. And a few or of them whatever. have, and we have corrected those as they, they contact me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Jenko. Do we know if other parishes, not that it's a big deal, but are other parishes doing it this way? Are there, are there a plan or some of these employees? So I guess what I'm trying to ask, too, because this really started happening in November. Are we going to have some that's losing their sick days because we quarantined them? No, we sir. told them to go home. They will only lose their sick days if they choose to. If they do not want to, let's say, work from home or, or come up in the summertime to make up those days, then they would get the, the, their choice would be to have their sick days deducted. So, so they don't get paid now and they have to come no, back sir. this no, summer? Sir. No, sir. They will, can, they will not lose a penny if they say, I'm, co I'm having my second time of COVID, I'm out 10 days, we're going to have them work those 10 days over the summer to make it up. And that goes back to the beginning of this school year or how far we No, so from January. I mean, we'll, we'll go back if there was any, I have not been contacted about a double uh, COVID dip in the first semester, but if there's anyone okay. out there, please contact me and we'll make any adjustments we need to make. Well, that sounds like a great plan, so I appreciate that. That sounds really good, thanks. I know they're gonna be happy to hear it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Silly, sounds good. Do we need a motion on this? We have, Did we do a motion? Is we have a motion and a second. All right, Rose? I was going to say Let's something. Vote. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Jenko, thank you for the explanation. Uh, I know I talked to you a few times about it, and like Mr. Bush, I've gotten a, a lot of phone calls because people feel like we're sending them home, and they are basically, it's not their fault, it's not our fault, but they're losing money, and it is a shame. But I know that 
over the course of all the conversations, you all came up with this thing that the teachers, if they go home and they're quarantined and they're not really sick, they can teach, they can work from home. I appreciate y'all working that out because I know that was a challenge and I know that um, a lot of people had called y'all about that. Uh, but this, this is only, this policy and this last line for those employees who have not used their allotted benefits is strictly about the federal money or is this for all of it? This would work in the first part. Let's say if I went through the whole first semester and didn't get quarantined, this particular policy would work for that particular individual. If I was quarantined the first semester and getting quarantined the second semester, then they're going to contact me and we're going to go through the various scenarios of the way their sick days are not taken from them and they will lose no money from their paycheck. Okay. But, but this says for those employees who have not used their allotted benefits, meaning all of their benefits or just the 10 days that we were granting if they got COVID? The, the, the 10 days that they would have to quarantine. Okay. That's what those COVID. benefits are, those 10 okay. days. All right. I just want to clarify because um, we have had a lot of concerns and a lot of phone calls about people who, who are our employees and then their children also have had to go home and then they've had to stay home with their children. And that's that provision. I think it's three four, five, or six yeah. that deals with the child care. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Duncan. I, 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 a couple of people have said this, and I want to make sure that we point this out, because I think this is also a common misconception. The federal government did not provide us with funding for this mandate, mm -hmm. correct? That is correct. This they, is another unfunded mandate. They mandated that we give 10 days of extra leave to anyone who is having to quarantine during uh, because of covid is Correct. that do, do you, we have a number yet as far as how much that has cost us this year uh yes sir uh as of the end of the first semester uh, it is right at seven hundred eighty thousand dollars seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars quarantine leave yes sir that was not funded that was mandated that we spend but was not we were not given specific funding to fund that mandate that is correct and, and we're not done yet. We're extending it. That's for the half of the year, correct. Okay. That, that, that's, uh, so, so when you say 780000 that's not an additional money. It was already budgeted for these employees. They just didn't get paid, or that's 780000 above that, what they would have got paid anyway. This is 780000 in extra benefits that we're giving. Well, we're not giving. We were mandated to give, and I'm glad that we're doing it. But yeah. this is not benefits that they were receiving prior there to no deduction to this. of sick leave for, for that money yeah, this is over and above their sick leave over right. and above their vacation days over and above all of that right yes, sir. okay so clarify that then if, if it was seven hundred eighty thousand dollars did any of those funds come out of the cares act money or did it just come out of our general fund money or where did the seven hundred eighty thousand dollars come from then sir If I was a federal employee, it would come out of those particular funds. If I was a general fund employee, just like if I was to, to take a sick day, et cetera. But, but none of that was really like the initial CARES Act money that we no. got to no, buy no, PE, no, PPE no, or any we, of that? No, we use that for the technology. One to one. But that's what we, we really haven't had a report of late of how much money we've had to actually come out of pocket on the PPE or any additional PPE we've had to get after we got the CARES Act money. I would like to see if we have any kind of documentation on any of that, how much we've actually had to come out of general fund money or federal dollar money or whatever mm -hmm. dollar pockets you're finding it, just so we would kind of be updated on we how can do much that. it's costing us. Yep. Okay. Now, sure. I totally agree. I, I like that we have our Chromebooks and that's putting us in a better place. But let me ask you this, because that it was very good bringing it out, because the public and everybody feels like that we do have PPE funds and that we're not using it for our employees. But however, could we have used that in employment for the employees? The, Had we, the, 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 the money that we use from the CARE Act and the- You mean for the, for the Chrome Chromebooks? Books. Yes. Right, the, but the, the we, biggest chunk of that money went for our Chromebooks and we did purchase okay. Uh, sanita sanitation and different things mm -hmm. like that and, and the priority uh, was for the technology or it was the priority yeah. but we could have used with the hot spots etc okay. yes, I'm not complaining that we're spending the money I just think it's important for the public to understand just like you yeah. said there's this impression yeah. 
that we're somehow being stingy with those dollars or not using it because we didn't want to give even more days right. but but that's not the case we the cares act money was used to to do the technology improvements that for for our students and teachers teachers all got new chromebooks as well we also used it to do all of the sanitation work the ppe purchases all of that and then over and above that we've also spent seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars so far to give leave when we needed to give leave so i, I just want i think that's important for the public to know that 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 this is not we're not just trying to hold on to money selfishly we're, we we're spending it where we think we need to spend it we're doing what we think we need to do um and um and it's not cheap you know it, it's it's not cheap all right any anybody else okay miss cindy call for a vote online voting is open Online voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. No, that's, I don't do that. Okay. Moving on to 6A, consider approval to move the February 16th board meeting to Thursday, February 18th due to Mardi Gras holiday. I'll make a motion to uh, amend the calendar. Okay. I'll second. Ms. Dominguez made a motion. Ms. Sandra second. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to 6B and C, Mr. Jinko, consider termination of support empl employee. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening again. Uh, for the termination of the support employees, the individuals, there is not, they are not due a hearing before the board. Uh, if the individual here, they could have put in for uh, public input to kind of give you their version of, of what happened. I know Ms. Dilley's secretary sent you the information. Uh, the job abandonment for the two individuals must come before the board per our policy and you vote on it. Uh, the recommendation of the administration is to uh, terminate the individual for job abandonment. I hear a motion. A motion to terminate both employees. Mr. West, uh, Mr. Westmoreland, second. Anyone second? Did you say both? Both. That's what I'm saying. You said both. Okay, we'll do B. <laughs> do we have to put their name in the motion? I think we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is the um, custodian. Yes. I don't know the name. The first one is for a custodian and B. I'm not single. Victoria Morgan. Motion by Mr. Westmoreland, second by Mr. Duncan. Call for a vote. Just um, one second. Mr. Westmoreland and seconded by Mr. Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan. Okay. Okay, so these two terminations are not something that I'm familiar with. Uh, we emailed the information last week and uh, this for job abandonment, which means they just didn't show for work for an extended period of time after, after we've tried to contact them. There was, was any public in he said that they could have requested a public to they, give public they input could come to the meeting and have a public input on this their particular item and give you their their side of the story and they didn't do that they, they chose not to do that they were delivered the the, the mail with the date etc okay okay so mr dinko you can confirm that both these employees have been notified properly notified of this yes. termination yes sir. right all right miss cindy call for a vote Voting is open. <clears throat> Something's wrong with my mouse. Voting is closed. Motion passes with Mr. Moore abstaining. 
Okay, um, we're going to move to C, consider termination of a support employee uh, office assistant. Move to adopt the administration's recommendation. Second. Who is Mr. Duncan? Employee? Second by Mr. Westmoreland. Any discussion? Call for a vote, Ms. Cindy. Robin. Yes, ma'am. Just to clarify again, um, Mr. Jinko, this is another one that just did not show back up to work. Correct. Okay. With multiple With attempts, multiple attempts. Okay. to contact. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Online voting is open. Online voting is closed. Motion passes with Mr. Moore abstaining. All right, we're going to move to personal privilege. Mr. Bush, we'll start down there on the end with you. Yes, ma'am. I'm going I'm to lay it on the line again. You can go to Amy High School. You can be the Heisman Trophy winner. You can be the governor of Louisiana. Or you can go graduate from Sumner High School and become Miss Louisiana Teen USA. I think. No, Miss Louisiana. Miss Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> and I don't even know Miss Crow, I think was her name. But congratulations to that Sumner community because we have another star in our state that graduated from a Tangible Parish High School. Yeah. So. I'm beginning to think you can be anything you want to be. That's right. You go to one of these great schools. Even Hammond High, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted us to take our picture tonight all in purple. And I said, absolutely. I was the only one that agreed. <laughs> but, but congratulations, you guys up there in the north end. We got another winner up there. That's right. Miss Andrew? I just want to ditto that. I'm just so very proud of our, our young man, and I'm, I'm proud of those that had a, a, a hand in his success, and I couldn't be more proud of our school system. Amen. Mr. Duncan? He's good. Ms. Janus? I just want to say congratulations to Miss Louisiana, and also uh, I'm just, my heart is just still bubbling with um, Devontae Smith, and and I just have to say, you know, District A is really, you know, rolling right now. <laughs> um, also, I got a, a text this afternoon that said that my own grandson, Keandre Fultz, is um, placed third in the nation for the Division Three level, level of play in track. Wow. Great. I'm excited about that. You still? Very good. I would like to recognize Tanya Crow. I'm personal friends with her, and I've watched her journey to win Miss Louisiana USA. It took this girl seven years to win. She's been seven times to Miss Louisiana. She was the Tangible Parish Fair Queen here, and she just set her mind out that she was going to do this, and this was her last year to compete. And she did it, and we were so, so, so proud of her watching her on TV the other night. Just want to say congratulations, and hopefully we'll be able to do a proclamation to her as well one at no, one of our next board meetings. We're going to start naming some of these buildings after these people. I believe, <laughs> won't we? That's it. All right, Mr. Westmore? I'd just like to say congratulations to Mr. Devante Smith and... Uh, he can look me up if he needs a good lawyer because I have a feeling he's going to be signing a big contract soon. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to, again, uh, congratulate uh, Ms. Crow and her family and also Devontae and his family. What accomplishments we have right here in hometown, and it's, it's, I'm proud. Uh, I have a first cousin or second cousin that lives in Alabama that first thing he did was call me and wanted to know if, if I knew him and if I could get him. So anyway, <coughs> it's been really interesting to watch all that. So. Um, we also just an update I see Mr. Vining here we had a good meeting today on the um, the consideration to the for the GPA um, changes that were that have been proposed by a community member we will have a meeting soon uh, with all the stakeholders and with the coaches to um, debate that further so we'll have a recommendation to bring to the board um, whether it's moved or not whatever we need to do so we'll have something to bring to the board before too long just want, didn't want you thinking we'd forgotten about that so thanks to me yes well, uh, while we're, as you say, crowing, mm -hmm. uh, we have athletic, the Louisiana Athletic Association this week recognized one of our uh, Punch Hill High School coaches, our assistant coach of the month, Ben Ernst, and we're proud of him. And also, um, Patricia Landash is our winning Punch Hill High School basketball coach, and she had her 200th win. 
And so we're really proud of, of our people on the south end as well. So thank you for all your hard work. We congratulate Devontae Smith and his family for a job well done. We're real proud of him. And also Miss Tanya Crow as uh, Miss Louisiana USA. So we're, we're really happy we have some good homegrown students in Tangible Parish. You can go far if you put forth the effort. Mr. Jerry? Yeah. Okay, I, I too would like to con congratulate Devontae again. I, I do understand that there are a lot of talented athletes but not all pursue it to the level that he has. I know that there was a lot of hard work going into it. It's easy to congratulate him and to recognize him for the accomplishments that he has, but to, uh, to recognize the hard work that it takes. Um, not a very easy job, and he has excelled right to the top, and uh, it's just only the beginning. So congratulations um, again to Devante. And I also want to shout out again to all of the distant learners um, to stay prayerful and hang in there. Um, and this is not going to last forever. All right. Go to executive session. Mr. Duncan, you want to read those? Move to enter executive session to consider the matters of LaKaren Mitchell and Michael Mitchell versus Tantro Pair School Board, which it looks like is on here twice, and then also to consider a spring. Creek School property dispute issue. Second. Can we take the picture before we go back there? While we all here, we're going to wait that. You know how I, I, I like to stick around after the meeting and chat, but sometimes I'll wait. But you really don't want to. You want to recess? All right, Mr. We'll recess, and we'll take our picture recess real quick. Our picture. Agenda B, move to adopt uh, council's recommendation. Second. Westmoreland second. Everybody else? Yes. Everybody, yes. Like Everybody say yes. Nothing. Um, did, or did I, so I don't think we needed to give him anything. No, we didn't. Do no action needed. I'm going to make this a quick picture. Okay. Media adjourn. Get back.